In other words, you can't make deals with God. It doesn't work that way. He is God and we are not. His ways are not our ways. You can't put them to the test. He doesn't need to prove anything to us. He's always been faithful. The question is, do you believe him? Look at me at the, the last verses. Verse 4. So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and taking your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile River and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. They called the place Massa and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Very similar to chapter 15. Moses cries out to God, and again, God provides water for his people. He hadn't left his people. He was there the whole time. So in chapter 17, Israel had their third test at Wiz Wilderness University. The test of no water again. So did they pass the test? Again, say the answer is no and maybe. No, they didn't trust this God, God this time. But maybe they'll trust him next time. You know, the great thing about preaching through a whole book of the Bible is, is that you notice some themes and topics that you wouldn't normally notice if, say, you were just preaching on one chapter. For example, if we were just looking at chapter 16, we would just say, Israel's biggest problem is complaining. Israel's biggest problem is grumbling. And that's, in one sense, true. That is a big problem of theirs. But when you read chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17, and the rest of the story, we see that Israel has an even bigger problem at Wilderness University. And that is this. They are not learning. They're at school. They're present. They're taking the tests. But it's quite obvious they're not learning anything. How do we know that? Because they keep repeating the same mistake. Instead of growing in their relationship with God, they're stuck in that same cycle. It repeats. It repeats. It repeats. And that leads me to my last point, and that is learning is more important than the diploma. Learning is more, more important than the, than the diploma. Let me explain what I mean. At Wilderness University, the whole point isn't just to get to the promised land. It's clear God wants his people to learn some things along the way. It's the destination, but it's also the journey. The Christian life doesn't end with salvation. The Christian life begins with salvation. From there, we move on to what, what we call sanctification, which is uh, the process of God transforming us to be more and more like Him. So God meets us where we, where we are at, but God doesn't want us to stay in that place. He wants us to grow. He wants us to learn. This is what the word disciple means. A learner. Israel indeed was freed from Egypt from slavery. But it's clear they needed a lot of growth as people. They needed a lot of sanctification. One author says, Going through the wilderness was not necessary for Israel's salvation. But it was necessary for their sanctification. God didn't say, do these things and I will save you from Egypt. No, he saved them from Egypt and said, here is what I want you to do. Israel might have expected to go straight to the promised land after Egypt, but God took them through Wilderness University to be tested, for them to grow. The problem in these chapters is they're not growing. So let me bring it back to you, to me. Are you learning what God is trying to teach you right now? Or are you stuck in that same cycle again 
and again, and again. Do you keep having the same problem in your life over and over and over? The people, the location might change, but are you having the same issue again and again and again? Now, could it be that God is trying to teach you something? And maybe you didn't understand it on the first test. And maybe you didn't understand it on the second test. So he gave you a third test, a fourth test, fifth test, sixth test. No, 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 no. You know, whenever you move to a, a new culture, you're, you're going to find that some things are the same as your own culture and, and some things are different. And one of the differences I learned uh, when I moved here to Poland is that in university, if you fail a test, that you can take it again. And if you fail that test, you can take it again. Where I'm from, if you fail the test, then you fail. You, you're done. You can't take it again. And if you fail most of the test that semester, you have to repeat the whole course the next year. But there is something about Poland's method that I would say is a little bit biblical. Israel didn't pass the test in chapter 15 with the bitter water, so God gives them the same test in chapter 16 with the manna. Israel didn't pass the manna test, so in chapter 17 he gives them the same test again with water. God keeps giving them the same test until they learn. You know, in one sense, we are all in the wilderness until Christ returns, right? We're all marching towards the promised land, that is, the new heavens and, and new earth. And until then, we are in the wilderness. We're travelers, we're sojourners, we're on the road. But I also think in life there are these moments, even years, when we really experience wilderness university. When life feels really tough, when we feel like we're, we're going to be crushed, when we feel like we're not going to make it. That's what the Israels felt like, right? They thought they were actually going to die. And that's real. But in those moments, we must do our best to zoom out, step back, and remember that God is good, and we can trust Him. And that these trials and tests we are facing might seem like too much, but God actually wants to, to use those in our lives so that you can grow, so that you can be ready for the next chapter of your life. But the only way to grow is if you learn. Here in Exodus, we see a great example of how to check whether or not we are actually learning, whether or not we're actually passing the test that God wants us to go through. And here's the way to check. Are you always complaining about the same things? Are you always complaining about the same things? If you are, there's a good chance that maybe you're not learning the lesson that God is trying to teach you. Of course, there's some exceptions, but this is what we see with Israel in the book of Exodus. Instead of trusting God in the wilderness, they complain to Moses about their situation. As Jesus said, our words reveal our hearts. And they had a lot to learn. They were immature, they were spiritual babies, but God's desire was for them to grow. He wanted them to be strong in their faith. So we tested them. They failed. So we tested them again. They failed. So we tested them again. Not because he is a sadist, but because he is the good, good father who wants his children to be prepared for the hard things of this life. Let me close by asking you this question this morning. What battle are you facing in your life? right now? What challenge are you going through today? What's that thing you keep thinking about? What's that thing you keep worrying about? It's so tempting to just complain about that thing. It's so tempting to, to lose heart about that thing. But could it be that God has you in that position to mature you even more? So instead of that being a negative thing, could it be that God wants you to show more and more that you can trust Him, that He'll provide for you? 
Remember, the learning is more important than the diploma. One thing I can guarantee you is that whenever this current problem of yours is solved, I can guarantee you there will be another problem right after that one. And when that one problem is solved, there's going to be another problem after that. And another one after that, right? That's just life. Of course, we have these moments on top of the mountain, so to speak, but most of our lives are spent in the wilderness. And if not in the wilderness, in the valley. So if that's where most of our life is spent, the question is, how will you be in the wilderness of life? Will you spend your time complaining, not trusting God to provide, saying, oh, it was so much better back in Egypt? Or will you be the kind of person that can believe that God can make bitter water taste sweet? Will you be the kind of person who can believe that God can make bread rain down from heaven? Will you be the kind of person that can believe that God can make water come from a rock? Don't just attend Wilderness University. Don't just go to class. Don't just think about the diploma. No. Maybe walk through the wilderness and learn. And we grow. God is faith. And Jesus, who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion. Will you pass that next test that the Lord has for you? And say, maybe. It depends on you. I'm going to invite the worship team to come forward. I'll be down in the front. I invite you to come. Uh, uh, and I'd be happy to, to pray with you. You know, maybe this morning uh, you feel a bit lost. And maybe you feel like you're in the wilderness. Maybe you feel like you're stuck in this same cycle again and again and again and again. And maybe God has convicted you and you've seen, wow, I, I, I do kind of complain a lot a grumbler. And maybe you're tired of that. Maybe you want to change. Maybe you want to be a person of contentment instead of a person of complaining. Or maybe this morning you just realize, hey, I'm, I'm in the wilderness and I don't know anything about this Christian life. I don't know anything about Jesus. I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm looking. I want to know more. I'd love to pray with you and share more about that as well. Or like always, if you are going through a tough time and, and you just want someone to bear that burden with you, if you want some prayer, I'll be here in the front. I invite you to come as well. Let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you for your word. God, from your word we can learn and, and, and know what pleases you. Father, we can grow. God, it's your desire that we don't make the same mistakes as people of the past. You don't want us to make the mis same mistakes of the people of Israel in, in Exodus 15, 16, and 17. So, God, we thank you for the tests in our life. They might seem painful at the time, but we can look back on those tests and see how you brought us through, how we're stronger, how we're ready for the next battle or problem that will come our way. God, help us to not be people of complaining. Help us to be people of contentment, trusting you at all times, God, that you are good and that we can trust you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand.